Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Of course, two things go against me. One is this auditorium, even though it's my home auditorium, it, it intimidates me a little bit because it's so large. Secondly, I've got a very favored slot just after lunch on a warm Sunday, a warm Tuesday afternoon. Not easy, but somebody has to do it. I'm there for the purpose. I'll try to keep it lively and so that you guys don't drop off, but if you do, I'll understand. Okay. Now, first of all, to set things straight, I am not Professor Sorrel Reisman. He is the president of the Computer Society of the IEEE. He was not able to come because of the situation in Europe where the flights have been cancelled. So I've come from just across the road. I'm from the E department of IISE. In fact, I'm with the chairman of E currently. I'm going to talk about IEEE Computer Society in particular. Now, I'm a former chairman of the IEEE Bangalore section, served a couple of times in the 90s. And I've been involved in the section over the years and with the Computer Society as well because that's my areas of interest. So I'll do a slight variation of the material he's given me because each one of us does it our own way. I'm also trying to factor in the local conditions and what is suitable for this particular presentation. Let's proceed. Okay. Let's take a look at the overview. We'll talk about IEEE very briefly. I'll keep my watch here so I'll know how much time is left. Then after that, I'll talk about the IEEE Computer Society relevant here. That's the Indian section of it, or the Indian branch. What benefits are there? Obviously, I'm talking about IEEE. It's to tell you that it's worth becoming a member, or at least getting involved in the society. I'll do that. Then we'll talk specifically about software development certification, which I think will be of interest to many of you. We'll talk about the Computer Societies of India, Computer Society of India, basically, and other computer organizations here, and the IEEE, because IEEE being international has had the tendency to link up with local organizations to serve both purposes. I'll talk about that a bit. Discounts for Indian professionals, the issue of money is always there. Naturally, I know you guys are well paid, but at the same time, you have to get good benefit for what you are paying. And what does IEEE do for technical innovation and career and job services? Okay. I won't do all details of these because they vary from point to point. In my 20 minutes, I'll try to cover whatever I can. What is the IEEE? Many of you would have heard of it. Some may not have. It's the world's largest technical professional society. 30,000 plus 300,000 members. Relax out of which one third are student members. I'll come about the geographical divisions a little later. Little history about IEEE. It was somewhere formed a long time ago by the merger of the American Association of Power Engineers and the IRE, which was the Radio Engineer Society. So you can see from these two names that IEEE has its roots in power engineering and radio, none of which is very prominent today. And for people in the computer industry, it's just a blip on the horizon. They're not really interested in it. What happened with IEEE is it grew and kept growing. 300,000 is not a small number. And its nature changed significantly. You look at areas like artificial intelligence, robotics, expert systems, computer engineering, software engineering, They've all come into IEEE, but it's hard to change a name. Once a name gets established, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, you, it's much safer to stay with it than to get a fresh name nobody knows about. So don't get intimidated. It's still the same. It's still capable of meeting a lot of needs of different people. I'd imagine a lot of you are not electrical or electronics or communication engineers. Some of you would be computer engineers, some would be software professionals. I mean, IT and degrees. Some will have degrees in arts, science, whatever. IEEE recognizes this, as I'll tell you a little later. The 10 regions, 2,000 student branches. Don't worry about the numbers. They're not giving a test on it. There are 10 regions of IEEE. It started as a very much a US society, so 
regions one to six, where in R in the US, depending on the areas, California and, and the West Coast has one, the Eastern region like Boston has another, New York has a third and so on. Region seven is Canada, the neighbor to the north, who finds it hard to sleep with the elephant, but that's their problem. Region eight is Europe and Africa. It looks like very large in territory, but a lot of the European societies have their own professional societies, the home society. And so IEEE is like not their main society, just like here, the Institution of Engineers. So their numbers are small, even though their extent is large. Region 9 is South America, the only one that operates in Spanish. Region 10 is most of Asia, except for parts of the Soviet Union and one or two Middle East countries. Australia, New Zealand is region 10. That's what we operate under. Now, it's also organized both in regions and IEEE members, more than one-fourth are society members as well. I'm one, Professor Shankaran sitting over there is another. So a lot of us. Forty percent of us live outside the United States. You do the math, how many that is. Twenty-eight thousand from my calculations, but anyway. So to serve all these members, they have regional offices as well. There's one in Tokyo, there's one in Moscow, and one is planned in India. Not come yet, but it will come. That's the Bangalore one that's in plan. So right here we'll get IEEE Computer Society support, which I think is a measure, even though we try to beat our breasts and say we are fantastic. It's a measure that they take us seriously. They think it's worth setting up a section over here, uh, office over here to help our needs. Okay. Now IEEE is organized into various branches. Like there's a Bangalore section which I headed at one time. And so that's based here. It covers Karnataka. Similarly, there's one in Chennai, there's one in Delhi, and so on down the list. Most of them actually have computer society chapters. The way it works is you start a, sec a branch, which means you have enough members to justify your existence as a separate geographical entity. Once you start the branch, it will cater to all members. But if you get more than so many members in your area, it's worth forming a society branch. Or society chapter, which can cater to those needs. We have a computer society chapter over here, which is a very active chapter. We have a communication chapter. We have a signal processing chapter, and so on. Power engineering chapter. So that's the way it goes. We have such chapters all over. There are branches all over the place. I won't read them out. I'm sure your favorite college will be among them, which means your own home institution. This, these are the members. Now, your last two columns show our total membership, which is not very large compared to the totals, but it's growing. And we hope it will grow some more after you guys hear my talk, but that I won't guarantee. It publishes a lot of journals, which for academics like us are very important. I'm sure working professionals need to grow and to keep in touch with them. These are the magazines and journals that exist. You could see within the computer society, there are a large number of them. The last two are joint chap things, IEEE ACM transactions, because we tie up with ACM, which is also a big computer society, and networking as well. So these are the benefits. All people who become members of IEEE also get the IEEE computer journal. Now that has changed over the years. Up till maybe about seven or eight years back, a lot of it was hardware related and systems related. But in the last few years, recognizing that more and more of the people reading the magazine or, be, or being targeted by the magazine are actually software professionals writing software, not so much concerned about the hardware and the theory, this emphasis is shifted. Some of us are a little uncomfortable about it being academics, but we live with it. It's pretty good even as it is. So this, this is their function. What are the membership benefits? You receive this, this, journal, this magazine, which you may or may not have time to read. Some of us find it very useful to read it. So obviously, if you have the time, it's always worth reading. You, the other things that are also becoming more and more important is one, your certification and your training. I'm going to talk about that later. Now, interestingly enough, 
unlike mechanical, electrical, civil engineers, and medical doctors, who are trained specifically for this profession. A large percentage of computer people come in through different routes, as you all well know. Some are actually computer engineers, computer scientists, IT, IT degree holders, MSc, engineer, MSc computer engineering people. But a lot of people are basically master of science or mechanical, electrical, civil engineers who got programming as a skill and used it. So for all of you getting certification, such people, it is very, very important because your credibility goes up with it. So I think rather than talking about IEEE benefits in general, these are important benefits for you. You also have access to the IEEE library, which is a very, very good library. You could get involved in the standards organization activities, especially software standards if you are so inclined, or you are so in your organization, and things like that. There are online courses. This is very important. There are 3,000 free online courses that come with your membership. And so in your spare time, if you do have spare time, which sometimes not there, you can train yourself and get more specialized in to topics which you are unfamiliar with, broaden your career co prospects. As an academic, I remember growing up with the concept that people, once they got their degrees, went out and practiced, and you live the next 30 years on that degree you had. As all of you know, that's long, long in the past. So we always keep talking about continuing education. And this is one of the best ways of continuing education. The other is lectures, tutorials, which are run by the local section. We run quite a few of them, very popular. They draw in a lot of participants, one day or two day programs. It's a very quick way to get yourself up to speed on a topic. We don't certify it, but we certainly train you. There's a listing of some of these. I'm sure it will be made available to you later. Then you get online books as part of your membership. A lot of authors today decide that publishing hard copies and trying to sell them to booksellers is old hat. It's not a good thing to do. A lot of people prefer to distribute their books online. Now, I know it's not always comfortable to sit and read a book at a terminal, but it's certainly easier for a technical book than it is for a novel, because novels like to curl up on the couch and read it comfortably, but when you, you want to keep awake and concentrate, you sit at, sit at the terminal and do it, it's generally much better. Okay. So this is how IEEE helps developers. It's publications, which are very well written, very well peer reviewed. Now I know there's a lot of electronic publishing on websites. The problem is you do not know which are good and which are bad. So the journals and the publications of IEEE are peer reviewed. Because rather than going to a quack, you're going to a well-qualified doctor. So it's a much better idea about going about things. We have curriculum and accreditation. A lot of our we do accreditation in India through the professional bodies, government bodies, but IEEE also does accreditation. It has some of these things. And most important thing is certification. Now IEEE is offering you certification. I can guarantee you if you get IEEE certified, you will carry a lot of credibility with people who matter. So in looking for your next job, your next promotion, it might be useful for you. Now there are two certification routes. There's a Certified Software Development Associate and the Certified Software Development Professional. One is entry level, the other is an advanced level. I'll talk about that next. The first one requires no formal requirements, which is good news for people who are not formally qualified within the computer field, software field. What do you require? To be a recent software or computer engineering graduate. If you are a graduate in these areas, you want to brush up on topics and get yourself... Now, I know I'm not passing, uh, fasting aspersions on institutions in general, but within the country we have all sorts of organizations. So within these organizations, some of them are very well rated. Sometimes they're lower rated, perhaps, as an academic and leading institution. I take it with a pinch of salt when we're rated very high. 
there are middle level ones and there are smaller ones. Now, I do not look down on smaller ones because I know a lot of top class people who happen to go to a small school. But a lot of people are not quite as broad minded. So, if you, if you come from a small place, you have the most to gain or if you come from a branch which is not directly related to the field you are in, you have a lot of stake in getting a qualification like this. If you are an IIT computer science graduate from IIT Kanpur to take a case, I do not think it might help you any. But from a smaller place, it might help you a lot. So, an undergraduate can also do it. Typically, an undergraduate who got into a field because that was the branch available, he does not want to stay there, he wants to get out, he or she instantly. Or a non degree professional with two or more years of programming experience, college dropout, school dropout. You are in those categories, you could go with the first one. The second one is you require the advanced one, which requires one of the, you must have been qualified through the first level one, so that will take you indirectly. If not, you must have the appropriate education, which is a bachelor's degree or a full member of IEEE. Now, if you are full member of IEEE, that means you have you've reached the IEEE standard of getting a degree, even if you did not formally have one, or if you have a degree in any branch. And you need experience, either an advanced degree, like a master's, or about some experience in programming. So, you could take these. The exams are multiple choice. I am sure all of you are expert at that one. 180 multiple choice questions within 4 hours, computer based, so it is an online exam, and the score is issued just like GRE or GATE as soon as you leave the center. And the credential package will come within 4 to 6 weeks. So, this would be of interest, I think, to a lot of you. And I think at this point, I should begin to summarize what I am going to do. Okay. So, these are the places where you could get it. So, these are some of the instructors available. I do not know all of them, but Raghu Nambio is the first name over there as a former student of mine, incidentally. They are all pretty good, I am sure. They are all at big companies, and so they are, can be counted upon. So, this is a nice little picture about it. I do not have time to do much more about that, so I will skip through. And Ah, membership. You can directly become a member of IEEE if you qualify. If you have a degree in one of the electrical or computer related subjects, you qualify automatically. If you, if you are not in from that area, but from other areas, but you have experience working in related areas related to electrical engineering or computer engineering or bio, com computation biology or any of these, there is a route, you can be recommended and tested out and they will give it to you. So, if that is the case, please check with the local members around here, lots of us are members, know any member, check with them, they will tell you how to go about it. The fees come to about 69 dollars and if you become a computer society member, 25 dollars on top of that. And frankly, with your backgrounds, if you do not become a computer society member and only an IEEE member, it might be a bit of a waste for you. So, that discounted rates, I am not going to talk about that, that is not my area. And okay, so this is the last. Ah, one more thing I would like to mention before I close. If you are a member of some of the computer societies within India, like CSI, they have a tie up with IEEE, so you could get joint membership at a discount. You pay less than the sum of the two fees. And they fulfill different needs. IEEE fulfills more of your technical needs and your certifi certification needs. And computer society here will fulfill most of your local professional needs of organizing, networking, etc. Our local computer society will also help you with that. Anyway, thanks for your very patient hearing. I'd like to conclude this particular point. Thank you.